going into the presentation, um, I am going to ask you uh, to um, submit some questions that will be later used in the panel discussion. Um, uh, so that will be re later referred to our panelists. Next slide, please. So you're probably very familiar with Mentimeter after the um, global cluster meeting back in June, but I'll ask you to uh, take your phone to go to uh, www.menti.com and insert this code 35176575. Uh, you will see two questions that I'll ask you to answer. So one specifically is what challenges are you facing when it comes to uh, monitoring, evaluation and follow up uh, of capacity building activities? Uh, so hopefully um, we are going to support you um, during the panel discussion, sharing some best practices on how to overcome these challenges. Uh, and the second question is uh, what other question you would like uh, me to ask to our panelists? So please. Uh, do go uh, to www.menti.com, insert the code and uh, um, um, share some, uh, um, some questions that you would like to be later on uh, discussed during the panel discussion. Great. So it's time to go into our first presentation. Uh, so our first panelist is Elizabeth. I'm going to share uh, a presentation right now. And um, Elizabeth uh, is going to uh, present on uh, uh, this consortium activities for the harmonized measurement of a contractual indicator and specifically how this um, is being measured to uh, ensure donor compliance. As, uh, as we know, monitoring evaluation activities are also important for donor compliance. Elizabeth, I hope you can see my screen. Over to you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Elena. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here today. Uh, as Elena said, uh, I'm going to tell you a bit more about the methodology that we use to measure one specific indicator related to our capacity building activities. Um, ah, OK. Perfect. I can change the slides by myself, or I think so. <coughs> yes, I think you can. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Um, so just to give you a bit of uh, context on that. So this uh, indicator is in the framework of a, the PPP project that we have with ECHO. So it's a CCCM uh, oriented um, project in eight countries. Um, and multi-regional as well. Uh, you can see by the list of the countries that we have here. Um, and uh, the capacity building activities are targeting different kind of uh, different kind of uh, participants. So we can have like local authorities, national authorities, other type of actors that uh, can play a role in the CCCM services. Uh, in the camps and sites that uh, are part of the project. So obviously all the materials uh, need to be adapted to the reality of the different countries, the different training that are happening. And uh, for you to know as well that uh, the capacity building is part of a broader package of CCCM uh, activities that we have for this project. Um, so we have one uh, specific indicator uh, that we use to assess like the, the impact or the uh, the impact of the training. Uh, it reads percentage of key local stakeholders that demonstrate improved key competencies in settlement coordination and management after capacity building. Um, so this project is actually a outcome driven one so the donor was uh, very keen on having outcome uh, out outcome information uh, we set a target of course and the type of assessment that we use is doing pre-test and post-test with uh, ideally all of the participants um, the responsible team for that is a combination of the project team and the monitoring and evaluation team. Uh, 
Um, so just to give you a bit more information about the pretest and the post test that we are uh, we are doing. Um, the pretest, obviously, we do it like before the training happens, and most of the time it would be like at the same time as like just before the the first session of training begins. It can be administered either through uh, the meal team or the project team. It depends. Uh, in our harmonized methodology, it has two sections in the pretest: introductory questions that generally want to assess like the the um, like their experience in CCCM, the position that they have in the organization, etc. And then we have a set of questions that is totally related to the content of the training and that will be used for uh, measuring the transfer of knowledge. So this has to be, of course, adapted to the content of the training that uh, that uh, that we will uh, be providing. For matters of like uh, analysis and understandability, like uh, we try to do a multiple choice uh, questionnaire because obviously <laughs> uh, open ended questions are a bit more difficult to to assess. So this is the content of our pre test. And then we have the post test, which happens at the end of the last capacity building session or an, like a later relevant uh, Timing, it depends on the type of, uh, of training. For this one, it's better that it's not the program team, but rather the meal team that uh, can uh, do this assessment uh, for reason of uh, like impartiality and lack of bias, because sometimes it could be like uncomfortable for program teams to, you know, try to assess somehow something that will look also a bit like uh, the, the quality of uh, their training delivery. So better to have the meal team doing this. Uh, we will find the same questions on the used for the transfer of knowledge assessment. So like regular testing on your knowledge on the, the, the topics of the training. And then we will also have a section on participant self assessment. Um, this self assessment is going to be structured as uh, a list of skills that we aim to improve through the training. And we will ask them to score them, uh, score each of the, the skills uh, from one to five um, and to like so they can assess if they think that they have improved somehow in this area of skills. Very classic. Then we have a section on uh, participant feedback uh, on how they enjoyed uh, or uh, the training overall. So this is for the post test questionnaire. And then how do we use this data? Um, basically, we use the transfer of knowledge section and the self-assessment section. Uh, for each good answer, as for the transfer of knowledge, easy. Like if you have the good question, the good answer, sorry, you will get uh, you will get the point or the points. Um, and for the self-assessment, I told you that it's going to be rated from one to five. And so basically we will do the total of the self-assessment before and the self-assessment after the training. This will give us a, like a total of points uh, for the pretest, a total of uh, points for the post-test for each, uh, each participant. And then you set like a threshold that you will consider as, okay, uh, we consider that as an improvement in skills. This is a bit like up to you to arrange whatever feels like uh, like uh, useful. Um, and this will be done uh, for each part participant. So it's not like an overall uh, improvement for the whole group, but per participant. Um, apart from those uh, pre and post tests, uh, there are a couple of more uh, monitoring activities that we can uh, that, that we can have. Uh, very regular on-site monitoring during the during the training itself, with whatever information on the training's environment, the structure of the training, the content, the learning materials, etc. You can also have like a follow-up test, so something similar than the post tests, but like later on in the future, so you can see if they actually retain some of the information. And uh, uh, of course, you can also have like post-training practicum plans, but I think one of the speakers after me will uh, go a bit more into details for that, so 
I will leave her the <laughs> all the, the time to to get a bit of details on this. But so you can have like a combination of the people's tests and those different monitoring uh, activities. A few words now on the limitations of uh, this methodology, specifically the pre and post test um, methodology is that it's very specific to our project in the sense that uh, we implement it in uh, several countries. But for sure, like we try to uh, like build and harmonize uh, methods, but each country has to adapt, uh, obviously, the contents of the, the questionnaires depending on the training and the local uh, participants that they have um, for their activity. So we try to just uh, harmonize as much as we can the, the methodology of scoring and the structure, uh, the different sections of the questionnaires. Um, to keep in mind, though, that uh, when we talk about skills or gain competencies, it's always like it can be broadly interpreted. So that is why we try to have like a um, mixed methodology of self-assessment and external like more uh, hard uh, assessment. Um, to keep in mind, also it seems like basic, but uh, it's always very useful to properly understand the level of literacy and education of the, the, the participants or so their backgrounds to make sure that we have like some sort of homogeneous group or at least have like, if not, a properly adapted uh, training materials for that. Uh, if you have like uh, people with a low level of literacy, uh, there should be like more oral uh, oral um, ways of uh, testing. I think I've run out of my time, so <laughs> that is it just, for my uh, side. Just one question before we move to um, English presentation. Uh, so what would you say is the main challenges you have been facing in the implementation of this um, methodology across the countries where the project um, is implemented? Yes. Uh, so the thing is, when it comes to capacity building, we have like a wide range of uh, participants in the trainings, but most of them, all of them will always be like uh, adults with uh, like uh, some established profession already. So it can be sometimes a bit uh, tricky to actually uh, ask them to go through pre-test and post-test because maybe they can, they can feel a bit like uncomfortable with that. Um, what we advise for a country is to put as much po as possible the emphasis on the fact that those testing are not like to give them a good note or a bad note on, uh, on their skills, but rather to understand the, quali the quality of the, uh, the intervention of the NGO. And um, we anonymize the, the questionnaires so they don't feel like there is the name <laughs> written all over um, a graded test. Great, thank you. So before uh, uh, giving the floor to Ingrid, I just want to uh, remind you uh, about our Mentimeter um, running at the moment, asking you uh, what are the challenges you're facing in monitoring, evaluation and follow-up or capacity building activities, and also what are, uh, what are the questions you would like me to ask to our panelists during the second part of the webinar that will be dedicated to the panel discussion. Uh, so I dropped the uh, um, uh, link in the chat and the code in the chat, but just to uh, remind you you that you can go to www.menti.com and enter the uh, code 35176575 uh, to share your inputs. Great, thank you so much. Uh, so now I give the floor to Ingrid that will uh, present on the capacity sharing initiative, uh, the joint initiative from UNHCR and uh, IOM in Bangladesh. Ingrid, over to you. Uh, thanks, Elena. Uh, can you share the presentation? Yes, it's on the screen right now. Okay, great. Uh, good evening, everyone from Bangladesh. So, as Elena mentioned, I'm presenting on behalf of the Capacity Sharing Initiative, which is uh, coordinated under the Site Management Site Development Center and uh, under the joint partnership of uh, UNHCR and IOM. So uh, my colleagues are with me uh, when we discuss uh, about this one. So that's on behalf of those uh, three uh, joint uh, agencies working together, agency and the sector. So 
Uh, we can move to the next slide. So this capacity sharing initiative, uh, I will, so the outline of my presentation, uh, we'll start first on what we have achieved so far. So the background of the CSI and then the achievements and then what we try to capture in the learning progress survey. So this summary findings that I'm going to share on behalf of the team is covered uh, within the December to January uh, survey that we did across the camps of, um, uh, in the AOR, so the area of responsibility of both IO and UN. So our 36 camps uh, of the Rohingya uh, refugee response. So uh, next slide, please. So this is just a, a background for those who have already attended, as Elena mentioned in the previous uh, CCM in the Global Cluster Retreat, we also shared about this one. So to support the government of Bangladesh in terms of its uh, capacity development, IOM and UNHCR uh, initiated this uh, joint capacity sharing uh, together with the site management sector to support uh, the Office of the Triple RC, or what we call the Refugee Relief and Repatriation Commissioner, uh, to who handles the management of the camps uh, in the 36 uh, refugee camps uh, in Bangladesh. And uh, so this uh, initiative is supported also by the working group, which consists apart from the two UN agencies. So we have our partners, the NGOs, DRC, CARE, Action Aid Bangladesh, uh, BRAC, a national NGO, and we have acted. So uh, in general, the objective of this uh, initiative is to share the collective expertise of site management support agencies with the camp in charge, who's uh, the government uh, delegated authority in the camps, with their assistant CICs and the growing teams of uh, staff, CIC staff, uh, which covers their uh, uh, community uh, outreach person. Then they have also the IM person, and they have also uh, the care and maintenance uh, officer. So in all camps uh, around 2018, so uh, UNHCR with agreement with the government of Bangladesh uh, supported in the recruitment of this uh, staff uh, who holds uh, positions to help on site management uh, roles and activities. So next slide, please. So, uh, so this platform, while it's hosted by the site management, site development sector, uh, it is actually a multi-sectoral platform which covers all the, the sectors uh, in the Rohingya response. So it is like a common platform uh, wherein the different sectors can share their, their uh, expertise and also provide support. Uh, because as background to the participants to this survey, so the CIC staff, are recruited from all over the countries. They were onboarded. They're very new to the humanitarian setting, to a humanitarian response. So uh, this is really an induction to the whole uh, sectoral or cluster um, architecture and response. So uh, here you will see uh, what we have achieved so far in the 2019-2020, which was a part of the survey that we wanted to check in terms of learning progress. So next slide. So in 2019, 2020, so when this initiative was launched, uh, so early in 2019, UNHCR and IOM worked together with site management sector to draw the project document for the phase one. And this was discussed with the RRC with the government, uh, which provided the support. So the commissioner then uh, provided its approval and support uh, to roll out this um, capacity sharing initiative. So in that uh, scope, so we covered um, an induction training on the humanitarian response one day, which had uh, all the CIC staff, including support staff, the cleaners, the guards, and we have also the technical uh, CIC staff. So we had a one day um, induction training for, for all. So 180 staff during that time in 2019. And then we also, since they were very new, they also had the shadowing experience. And first we wanted to run it in a month and after a preliminary review, the, the RRC and the camp in charge also uh, requested to extend the shadowing. So this shadowing process is wherein our, the CIC staff were observing so during that two period, uh, two month period, they were not given uh, heavy tasks uh, from from their usual TOR, but they were observing our site management staff in what were the main components of site management. And then, so we had site management training. Uh, as you may know, we have 
contextualized together with UNHCR and the sector, the global module, CCM module, into the uh, contextualized uh, response package uh, here in Bangladesh. So we had a four-day site management training plus one-day uh, field uh, field exposure for them. And then for this uh, period, we had the protection training, community-based protection, CWC, gender mainstreaming, uh, DRR, natural hazard. Uh, so during uh, those periods. And if you will see the whole platform, so we have in the pipeline and which we recently finished also uh, this two months, the IM and the nutrition, we also have it in energy and environment. So it's really the whole uh, sector so that they get to have a chance to undergo training. And also this also targeted some of the humanitarian partners that we have in the sector. Next slide, please. <laughs> Let me know if I'm running out of my time. <laughs> okay. So from the phase from November of 2020, so we relaunched because during the pandemic, uh, we were also affected in terms of all the trainings were also held back uh, during that time. So we started to re restart it uh, in, from November 2020. And part of it was the CSI evaluation survey, which we saw was very important because it was over the year or over a year when we started to implement the program. Uh, so next slide. So the purpose of the survey, so after nearly two years of collaboration with the government, the RRC, in this capacity sharing uh, and shadowing process, so CSI aimed to conduct a survey on knowledge and understanding acquired. So it was specifically to check how these trainings, how these processes have helped them, uh, the CIC staff through this modular training. So uh, first uh, to assess the impact of the training and second to collect lessons learned that would inform planning for the next phase, which is the phase two of the project. So the survey aimed at drawing respondents' view as well. So a recommendation how we can move further in this initiative. So next, please. So I've mentioned already the, the basic objectives and uh, we also wanted to assess the integration of the camp in charge and their support staff in the wider coordination structure. So knowing that there is the humanitarian structure, coordination structure that we have here in Bangladesh, we wanted also to see how their learning inform and help them like understand the coordination structure, the operational uh, functions in the camp and then look into CSI progress and existing capacities. Yes, uh, next slide. Thanks, Elena. So in methodology, we had an online survey. So here uh, I, I put that COBOL link in case anyone is interested to look at it. And then we have paper form. So the online survey uh, was for, for all. So after the paper form, because we had to run this in the camps, and um, so we had the respondents from the CIC staff and also the support staff, like uh, some of the questions were relevant to example, the cleaners, the guards. So we tried to cover the different um, TORs uh, in the respondents. And we have also the camp in charge for the key informant interview, uh, as well as uh, key uh, staff from the sectors and from the agencies. So we have it, so all the data that was captured even in paper form, at the end of the day, the staff uh, inputted it in the COBO and it was processed and analyzed later on uh, with the support of the sector and the UNHCR uh, as well. So the role of the site management was to administer the questionnaire. So they were in the camp, they had an afternoon together where they were taking the survey. So organize a session, monitoring session, collecting the form, uploading in Kobo and submitting the final forms to the focal AOR. So uh, during that time, uh, the AOR for IOM focal was me and then James, also my counterpart for UNHCR. So we also did the analysis together with the sector. Next, please. So these were the trainings undertaken and uh, the, the respondents you can see from here uh, have ranked this as well in terms of uh, the different, uh, so for gender mainstreaming, we have core induction, uh, wherein many attended because it, it covered the 180. And then you have the CWC trainings, the community-based natural hazard and DRR, the protection and legal and coordination and the site management. So he, they, they rank uh, also as well as in terms of the, the training in, in terms of relevance and uh, how they uh, saw the importance of it. So generally, next slide. So generally, in, in we see that most of them uh, rated it strongly uh, and 
relatively well. So uh, in summary, sub 173 submissions received, out of which 110 were from the camp in charge, the assistant camp in charge, and the CIC staff. So which was really the main focus uh, or the target of the survey, the learning survey. And uh, the remaining of that was from the humanitarian partners as well. Uh, notably, there were only 10% of the female staff, which tells us also like for the government staff, only very few females are on board. And then the seven trainings were evaluated for their usefulness, their relevance, uh, facilitator skills, and the time. So 100% of the respondents agreed, or strongly agreed that the site management training and CWC is useful, while 97% on community-based uh, protection and gender and natural hazard and DRR were also highly rated. So uh, if you'll be interested, uh, later we have also the, the detailed uh, report together with the questionnaire uh, if you want to see. And then 60, uh, 50% 7% uh, could define the term refugee. So then again, you would know in this context that the government uh, preferred the term FDMN or forcibly displaced Myanmar national. So it has a sensitivity to this context. But in during the trainings uh, for the humanitarian sector, we always advocated for the refugees. So they, they understood uh, the terminology on refugees and the, the rights of the refugees, at least in terms of understanding. And then um, so... 79% also said uh, that they often or always engage refugees in decision making. So note that they, there is a specific TOR for the community uh, engagement among the CIC staff. And then the, they also said they apply the referral pathway. So in the trainings with the GBB, with protection, they got to know and learn the referral pathway, so they mentioned. And there were other training needs that they also indicated. Uh, so next, Elena, just let me know if I'm up with my time. Yes, so you are. You are a bit. You're a bit running out of time. Uh, maybe so. Just we have enough time for the panel discussion. Um, we can just wrap it up here, and um, I can ask you one question before going to the next presentation. Which, uh, since you have presented all this uh, valuable feedback you got from the survey, so how are you planning to incorporate this feedback in the next? Uh, phase of the capacity sharing initiative. Yes. Um, so with this uh, input, so after the survey, we shared the report to the Triple RC, the government, uh, and then shared to them also the recommendations because most uh, or key informant uh, were also coming from CICs and uh, coming from the staff and even from the office of the Triple RC. So this was also to to validate. So we had the presentation to them and seeing also the recommendation. So when we made, uh, when we drafted the phase two of the capacity sharing initiative uh, project document, so this, the inputs uh, inform how the priorities for the phase two uh, would be. So like part of it is like really enhancing the coordination mechanism in the camps, which was uh, also highlighted uh, from the survey uh, report uh, based on understanding how, how coordination mechanism within the camp functions, between the government, the humanitarian partners, and the community. So, and then also the, uh, there was also an, an importance on trying to have this guidebook, which can help like really document the good practices which the government uh, can take on. And also the government is also, the Triple RC is also suggesting that they can put also what are uh, the guidelines from, from the government themselves. So most of the inputs coming from here, and of course the ongoing capacity development, which they said will be running across the project period. So uh, we have uh, uh, some key informants who have very specific suggestion, and we took it when we prepared the phase two uh, document. So now we're in the phase two of the project and we're working with the sector and uh, hoping to finalize, present it uh, with the interagency coordination mechanism here and then later on with, with the government as well. But they, they are already aware that this is, uh, so the, the survey was like a bridge of phase one uh, to phase two, so how it informs. So good thing we had the, most of the respondents, like 110 from 173 responses were coming from them, from their staff as well. So yeah. Thank Great, you. thank you so much. Um, I've seen that there are some questions for you, so uh, we'll uh, hopefully go a bit back uh, into um, this topic uh, during the panel discussion. 
Uh, but now I am welcoming my colleague Uda, who is joining from Yemen and is the focal point for the uh, CCCM Consortium. And she's going to present uh, on uh, um, uh, the consortium capacity building activities for local authorities and uh, uh, the consortium partner, the site management team uh, in Yemen. Uh, Uda, over to you. Yes, thank you, Irina. Yes, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Huda. I'm the capacity building for the consortium in Yemen. Um, I will present today about our consortium. The name of our consortium is Yemen Displacement Response Consortium. Next, please. This is the name of the consortium. Yeah. And here is the main objective of this uh, PowerPoint. I will introduce what's the consortium. I will talk about some a little bit about the capacity building unit, uh, who's going to, who we are targeting in our uh, consortium, and what's the achievement until now. Uh, finally, I will talk about the tools of mentoring and follow up, which is called in our consortium mentorship. Okay. Uh, so uh, the consortium uh, formed in 2019 as a partnership for four NGOs, three like uh, NGOs, DRC and NRC acted, and the fourth one is uh, UN NGOs, which is IOM. The aim, the, the primary uh, objective of this consortium is to respond to the need of the internally displacement response uh, person in the camp-like setting. Uh, the, uh, the consortium is uh, work, uh, working in 182 sites in nine governorate, and it's still continuously um, uh, expanding this uh, 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 targeting uh, to improve the living condition in the IDBs. Uh, and the, and the consortium is working on uh, multi-sector uh, response, uh, like uh, wash, shelter, and uh, protection assessment, uh, assistant, and as well as education and uh, health. Uh, they are uh, so we are working uh, with the with the partner to manage and coordinate the site uh, under the uh, all these um, sectors. Okay. Uh, uh, the capacity building unit is the main part or the main uh, the, the the important part uh, during uh, uh, on the consortium and the, the aim of this capacity building to improve the knowledge about uh, the CCM uh, uh, understanding for all the CCM actors working on the site and we are targeting two main groups it's it's like a direct uh, targeting uh, one is called the site management and coordination who is the SMC staff the, this is the staff who's working with the with our partner the second one is the site focal point site focal point i mean uh, who's like uh, from the local authorities uh, we are talking about Skamsha. Skamsha, they are the local authorities in in, uh, in north, who they are responsible to respond to the uh, displacement in the north, and the executive unit who are also in, in south, who is responsible to uh, respond to the uh, uh, displacement in uh, in south. Okay. Second, please. Uh, here I will talk about the achievement, the main achievement that we are in the last project uh, in the phase one so we we trained the smc staff in uh ccm training and tot protection and streaming psca also the site uh, focal point we trained them on ccm and tot uh, on additional we are always uh, cooperative and working closely with the cluster and we sometimes we are working with them to train their uh, partner who are already working in the field so they are not like a main target for us, but it's in terms of the collaboration with the cluster. So we are training them in CCCM. Uh, for CCCM, we are using like the, the, the global uh, CCCM uh, models. Okay, so as I, as I said, we are training the SMC staff and the uh, site focal point. Uh, but I, 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 I won't have to um, uh, tell you that we are uh, get the training for the TOT because we need to uh, ensure the sustainability. So uh, we don't like to uh, to uh, deliver this training and 
nothing happened. No, we need to have that uh, sustainability. So we train the SMC staff for TOT to ensure this staff will follow up and roll out all the training to the other sectors, to the other uh, people who was working with. And uh, why we are working with SMC staff and local authorities, uh, we, we have like a, a lot of complaint that received uh, uh, during our meeting with them that they have no idea. Sometimes the, the focal point they ask us, they have no idea about CCM. Sometimes there is misunderstanding between these two main actors who are in the field. So we decided to train both of them on the same knowledge, on the same topic. So it can be like uh, solve some problem uh, in terms of misunderstanding about the CCM. After the training, we are getting like a tool uh, which is called mentorship. Uh, mentorship with the SMC staff is different for with the site focal point. With the SMC staff, we are always making like um, after the training and during the training, we are doing a pre post test. It's one side. On the other side, after the training, it's like um, individual tools. We ask the SMC staff to fill this form. You see, this, this is the form that uh, we, we use with the, with the SMC staff. We are asking them to fill some information and we give them a table and we ask them. What you are like, fill, what's the gap that you need the consortium to help you to fill out? So they fill this table and some gaps, they are filling, they still have uh, some gaps in this. And after that, we collected all the information for all the SMC stuff that we are trained and we, we make it analysis in one table. Uh, please, next. Yes, this is the table that we are using. It's a tracker from us as a consortium team. So we use this a tracker to uh, insert all the information that we got from the SMC staff. And we discussed among us as a capacity building team to decide uh, what's the methodology, what's the way that we can cover for each one for this gap. Sometimes we, we see that uh, three or four or five of the SMC staff, they are asking for one thing. So we are planning to do one session. And uh, some for this gap need like a session, like it can be online, it can be like a meeting, it can be, but sometimes it needs um, like a um, uh, field visit, joint field visit, because some of them like uh, they don't know how they are, they going to do a meeting or like this. So we are going to decide what's the uh, methodology that like we are going to use to fill this gap. Next. So that one for the SMC staff. This tool uh, also for mentorship is used for uh, the, the, um, the uh, site focal point. It's called the short models. It's a models that we are agreed with the site focal point uh, with the yes uh, uh, in the meeting to train them on. And they asked us for a practical training. So we trained all the SMC staff in this topic during our training, but after that they are asking for practical training in the field. So it's 10 models. You see it for convention meeting, focus group discussion, for W's, contingency plan, distribution, referral, risk using the school, fire safety, protection streaming, incident report. So uh, this is mentorship or this is this is the 10 models. Uh, we ask the SMC staff during their work in the site to, to do this thing side by side with the site focal point in a practical. After that, they come with us, they come to us with a report, uh, an individual also. Uh, uh, next, please. And, and this, uh, next, uh, am I sent to you the word one? Is it still one? Yes. This is the report. <laughs> yes, thank you. This is the report that we are receiving from the partner. You see, this is the report, like they are saying, this is the name of the site point site focal point, and this is the name of the uh, models, which model that we are implementing in the field with them. And they have a small um, details about what they are doing in the field for this and uh, challenges and anything they are need. Uh, back, please go back to the, ex yes. After that, after we have all these words from the partner, we collected the information in this tracker to know how many models for each of the site focal points they are attended and they are trained. So you see here, we have the name of the site focal point and we have here the, in the last column, we have nine, five, it's 10. So if they finished one, they mean they are remaining nine. And like this, it's like a tracker for us. After that, we come back to the partner to see 
uh, how many they are rich, why they are like sometimes they cannot do it, and what's the challenge they are faced, it should be um, including in the report. Okay. Thank you so much. I hope I so, met my time. Yes, I think so. Um, so we're running out of time, but just before we go into the, run, the panel discussion, I just want to ask you, so how do you link the activities or and the capacity building activities for the site focal points, the local authorities, and the one for the, um, for the consortium uh, um, site management support teams? Yeah, thank you. You you see, this is the main problem that they we are facing uh, during our work with the with the um, uh, site focal point and um, uh, stuff. They are always complaining about we don't know what are you doing. <laughs> Each of them they are saying we don't know what they are doing. So we have like after this training done, we asked both of them to have like a, a regular meeting in the field, and we attended some of this uh, um, meeting. And during the meeting, that raising like uh, what is the challenge that you are facing in the field, how they are improve themselves and uh, after this training, what they need also, and this is jointly meeting is help Yani you know, help a lot and like um, to solve a lot of problem among the uh, site focal point and the, and the, the SMC staff. So uh, really, this is the the, the meeting, the continuously meeting, will help us to 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 help them a lot. And uh, I need to add. <laughs> One thing also, Elena, sorry, for the target group, I, I, I mentioned that we have two target groups, the SMC staff and site focal point. Additional, uh, uh, in phase two, now we are on phase two, we are planning to contact the training with the communities and the uh, uh, service provider. Uh, sorry, so I, I forgot to mention this uh, information. No worries. No worries. Thank you so much. So we move to the panel discussion. So I'm going to open the Mentimeter presentation to see um, what question you um, you have submitted. Uh, and for the panel discussion, uh, as said at the beginning of the webinar, we're also going to be joined by uh, Christine, uh, who has um, done uh, in the last two years um, training and TOTs uh, on CCCM and uh, on the community coordination toolbox for NRC. Uh, and actually, uh, um, I would like to ask you the first question, Christine, because uh, uh, one of our uh, participants said that he or she work mainly with trained trainers and uh, um, sometimes it is very difficult to have these people uh, reporting, updating their practical plan or doing self-reports. Um, uh, so how, how can he or she reach them? Do you have any, I don't know, best practice in your, uh, uh, in your experience uh, as a trainer and in the recent training that you conducted with the uh, NRC? Um, hi, Elena. Um, hi. Um, this is actually one of, uh, I mean, it's it's always a challenge, isn't it, both in person and online, um, to reach the the trained participants after some time. Um, but I think it's actually less of a challenge when it's online, um, when the training has been online and the TOT has been online already, because the communication modality has you know, it has been established um, from the start. So um, this is how you communicate. It's uh, via Skype or even WhatsApp or or uh, emails. Uh, so if they change location or position or or um, organization, uh, you can still reach them through you, through the different kind of online um, modalities. So um, it's uh, I find that it has been easier. Um, the 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 initial reaching them so when we do when we've done um uh, kind of um follow-up of trainings uh, online trainings and um coaching sessions um it's been hard to get participants to um uh, to fill out any kind of immediate um, um you know follow-up uh, service of questionnaires because they, they log off but um but this uh, regarding this question you know like finding them six months later i think has been much easier when it has been online so um, um we have to give them yeah. a break <laughs> we have to give them a break before uh, attacking them with uh, uh with follow-up activities 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Like there has to be some impact first to report on. And um, uh, I don't know, we've, I feel like there has been more um, interesting answers when, um, when, uh, when it's been uh, free text answers rather than how many mm -hmm. how many participants and the gender, but what type of coaching activities are, have you been implementing since? And, and what skills do you feel that you are, um, uh, that you are more qualified in since the training? And um, what kind of experiential learning have you, have you benefited most from? Um, then we get really interesting answers. Um, mm -hmm. So um, pretext and uh, try and establish maybe that, um, online uh, communication modality straight away, even if it's an in-person training with the, like sharing your WhatsApp number and your Skype or uh, uh, create that little community of, of practice between the, the training participants. Great, one. thank you. Um, Ingrid, I wanna ask you because you mentioned that, I mean, COVID has been a challenge in, Bodham, in uh, Bangladesh, sorry, and uh, during, uh, in the implementation of the capacity sharing initiative. So um, someone has pointed out that lack of access uh, uh, during COVID-19 uh, uh, and uh, funding gaps are a big challenge. Uh, do you have any best practice to share on this or any lesson learned from your experience? Um, actually, we were also impacted uh, with the COVID-19, especially when the government, uh, RC also issued restrictions in the camp, prioritizing only like life-saving activities. So trainings were also uh, pushed back or held off. So we, we were optimistic when we started this year, uh, first part of this year, and we had uh, the, the workshop for the camp in charge, the assistant camp in charge, so, and the RC officers, uh, because it has been like probably two years since they had this orientation on the humanitarian uh, sector. So together with the intersect of coordination and the uh, site management uh, sector and all the other sectors. So we managed to do two batches of that and we were quite optimistic that we can proceed with the site management or CCM trainings for them, the protection trainings, and alongside with the CIC staff trainings in the camp. So, but after the, the first quarter, uh, we need to stop. And, and during those times, most uh, were really working on uh, trying to improve the coordination. So whilst we cannot uh, hold the trainings in the camp, the uh, camp in charge staff or the CIC staff were also doing their own rotation. Uh, at some point, we also had like uh, very limited uh, footprints uh, on the ground, even for the CIC staff, they were also um, on rotation. So, and the question of online, we proposed that as well to the to the triple RC or the government. And they said it's uh, quite difficult as not most of them have limited access uh, to the internet. So we tried to do some ways, but what happened during that period until now that we restarted again and around October was much of it was the operational. Like uh, when we visit the camp, when I go to camp, we try to engage with this, the staff who participate in our training, how their uh the, the impact of the training and how they were able to apply this in the operational challenges. So, and our site management uh, teams also, the, the partners, the agencies are trying to engage them. And there are several challenges as well and issues, but I think this was an opportunity that uh, apart from the training, so that was the, the camp uh, the on-site uh, uh, application of their training learning, which happened during this pandemic uh, time. So uh, I think that's what we did. And now we're, we're back to having this window, hopefully, to continue again the learning. So we say that we did not stop, but we just changed in terms of modality. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Thank you, Ingrid. Um, so we have a question or comments on a challenge based on uh, uh, so related to measuring the qualitative impact of capacity building on staff performance. So I feel uh, uh, that your presentation was uh, uh, very much uh, also focused on how the consortium activities are, uh, how you as a consortium capacity building focal point, you have uh, also responsibility to build the capacity of the consortium staff. Um, so how how would you uh, reply to this comment or what other best practices you would like to share uh, when it comes to um, evaluate the qualitative impact of uh, capacity building activities uh, for our camp management or site management team? 
Yeah, thank you, Elena. Um, I will I will give this as an example with our uh, training with the SMC staff. Uh, the, we cannot say it's 100 percentage of the, uh, the measurement, but uh, uh, as we notice in our work, we we saw some um, changes in the behavior in the field from the SMC staff, which is improved, like improving on their uh, quality of the work. That means uh, it's like uh, it's also related to the same topic they are uh, learn in our training, and it's give us like an indicator they are benefit from this training. Um, I will give you example for the community committees format. Uh, some of the staff they are doing something. I cannot see it's wrong. They don't know that's that's the right process they are should follow. So a lot of problem happened during this. Uh, community committees form, but after the training, because in our training for the CCM, we are focusing a lot uh, on term of uh, community committees uh, form and the TOR and uh, uh, code of conduct and uh, all these topic for the community committees form. After the training, we noticed that a lot of them they are like um, uh, avoid themselves to to do any mistake with the community committees. So this is one example. The second one, which is more important. Um, uh, the training also focusing on roles, responsibilities with the three actors, cluster, uh, site management and local authorities. Uh, and it's it makes our training is like a, a whole discussion, a hot discussion between the participants. But after the training, we are hearing from the SMC staff, from the site worker thing. It's like now we are clearing about the roles and responsibilities. And sometimes it's like, um, uh, solve a lot of, of a problem in the field. So like these indicators, which is practical, uh, it help us to measure our training. It, it, is it a quantitative? How is the quantitative of this? Is it high? Is it low? So like this practical to give us the measurement, but we cannot see it's 100 percent. Great. Thank you with that. So I've seen someone uh, uh, submitted as a challenge structural or insufficient familiarity with the minimum standard income management. Uh, so hopefully uh, the um, capacity development working group and the minimum standard income management working group are working for you and um, we are looking at having um, a dedicated session for um, CCCM trainers in uh, January uh, sharing ideas and tips on how we can integrate the uh, minimum standard of income management uh, into uh, the global standard um, uh, training package, so stay tuned um, because hopefully uh, we're going to support you on this very soon. Uh, so because we're uh, running out of time and I think we have already shared um, during the presentation some, some tips on how to make pre and post test more welcome by participants, uh, maybe we can respond on this uh, in a bit, but let's see what other additional questions we'd like to ask to our panelists. Um, so I see one for Ingrid. Uh, so in the shadowing project, how did you verify that the uh, camping charge saw the same thing that the NGOs were doing? So I guess they were on the same page. And how did you monitor uh, for humanitarian motivation? So I guess linked to the fact that, uh, you know, some of these um, newly recruited CAC staff uh, didn't really have a humanitarian background prior to joining uh, the CIC teams. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, that's a very important uh, note. So when we did the shadowing, so we had some guidelines like uh, first we identified like what are the key components of site management, site development here, and then considering their TORs that they are uh, community mobilization assistance, they are care and maintenance, and they are information management assistance. So uh, they shadowed uh, based on their TORs. So the care and maintenance officer had a day plan or a work plan uh, that we tried uh, 
to provide to them. Uh, so like a checklist, like this is what they're going to do. But it was a very like um, a relaxed manner in the sense that they, they shadow, they observe what the site development actors are doing in the camp. Same for the information management. So they were asked like to observe how the FICs or the info feedback information centers happen, how in coordination uh, meetings, how the information flows. And that's why it was also part of the survey, like also some some uh, concerns in terms of uh, information sharing uh, also came out. And then third for the uh, community mobilization assistance. So they walk through uh, a day in the in the life of the camp manager, uh, how it is to engage. So uh, we have a tool. Uh, we developed some guideline, uh, not a tool, but a guideline on that one. But we did experience some challenges because. Uh, at some point, the CIC would have to call them because there's like emergency or there's some priorities that the CIC wanted them to do. So we we did recognize that the buy-in of the Triple RC office because always the camp in charge would be asking uh, this buy-in and this approval. So having them like agree, okay, for July we did it in July. They requested an extension until August. So that would be the work that they're doing and not just a side side thing that they need to do apart from or over or on top of their. TOR. So uh, that helped us. But in terms of the camp specific uh, guide, so they, they discuss with the camp managers. The camp managers help us to outline what are the key uh, components that they can observe in their camps because they have different camps. Those in the south camps or in the techno camps with the host community has also a different uh, highlight or uh, dynamic. So yeah, so we have a common guideline, but it was also sensitive to the particular camps that they are in. Over to you, Elena. I see. Interesting. Uh, and uh, so we have an additional question. Uh, I think he, I'm actually addressing to all of you. Um, I think specifically um, uh, Christine, um, Ingrid and Uda. So have you used the minimum standard in your recent capacity building activities, uh, for example, as indicator? Uh, if not, why not? And what would you need to, to actually incorporate the, uh, the minimum standard into your future capacity building activities? Anyone? Otherwise, I can share my experience. <laughs> um, I was in Mozambique not long ago and organized a, a training for uh, um, uh, an NGO that works in site management, camp management in Mozambique. And uh, unfortunately, the time was quite short and uh, uh, the minimum standards at the moment are not translated in uh, Portuguese. And uh, I was training uh, with a translator, so I knew that it would have been difficult for uh, the trainees to specifically access directly the camp management minimum standards. Uh, but uh, what I have I did uh, was that I incorporated mention to specific uh, management minimum standards as I was going through the modules of the global cluster, linking them to participation, linking them to coordination and uh, um, site monitoring, linking them to the site environment. So to ensure that the team was at least aware of the existence of the standards, of the standards, what the standards were saying, um, how to uh, I mean, remember that they had to contextualize uh, some of the indicators and some of the activities to their own specific context. Uh, and I mean, not an ideal situation also because I didn't have enough time, but uh, it was really to raise awareness on, on the standards. And I hope that moving forward, um, uh, what we're trying to do with the working group on the camp management minimum standard will help the trainers to incorporate uh, the minimum standard into their capacity building plans. Um, so are there any good example of coaching mentoring initiative for CCCM staff? So I think we covered this with Uda's presentation uh, and um, I mean for sure we will make um, available, we'll publish the presentation on our uh, capacity development working group web page. I know we're running out of time but maybe uh, Uda if you want to complement on uh, uh, on everything, anything you have uh, already presented on specifically for coaching mentoring initiative for the consortium team. For example, some of these tools would be, be willing to yeah. share them with the participants or? Uh... Yeah, yeah. 
it's not a tool but you, as i told you we have the like a, men, a mentoring with the smc staff and some staff during this uh, mentoring they are asking we don't know how we can do like a coordination meeting because we are always busy in the field and we are the main actors in the field and we don't know how we contact this coordination meeting. So as a consortium, we have a good relation with the managers and we ask the managers to help this officer or assistant or to staff to have a, like um, working closely with these people who's attending uh, a coordination meeting, who's uh, attending the cluster meeting and trying to help these people to learn more how this coordination meeting or cluster meeting happening, what they are discussed during this meeting, how is it helpful for these people to transfer what they learn on this uh, meeting to the field, how it's helped them to give like a general idea when anyone come to visit this site, they have a good idea about what happened around them rather than only focusing on implement, implement without like a full understanding what happened around them. So we have like um, a lot of uh, SMC staff who's already uh, getting this experience during our mentorship. This is one example. Thank you, Thank you so much, Uda. One last question uh, is, I guess, from Somalia, given the geographical focus uh, and asking for CCCM support uh, in accelerating CCM activities in the country. Um, so I think it's a good opportunity to remind you that we have a dedicated web page for the Capacity Development Working Group, uh, and uh, you can find um, some resources there, as well as uh, my contact or in, in, I mean, as uh, chair of the Capacity Development Working Group. So please do feel free to get in touch, and uh, I would be happy to um, uh, to to see and give sometimes uh, some of my time to see how I can help. Also, I I used to be with in Somalia, so hopefully I would be of particular use for uh, for the Somali colleagues that are joining in the call. Um, so I guess we are running out of time. So I really, really thank you. I thank all my past panelists and I thank all of you obviously for, for joining uh, the webinar. Um, also just a couple of, uh, um, of uh, public service announcement from my side. Uh, so we are updating the contact list of the Capacity Development Working Group. Uh, so you can find it on our uh, um, on our web page and you can subscribe to it. So uh, if you want to receive any updates on uh, uh, the Capacity Development Working Group, uh, please do uh, do subscribe to the to the contact list. And this is how the main the main way we will use to contact uh, um, members. Um, I also remind you that uh, we have a training registry. This is also a way that as uh, a working group of the Global Cluster, we have to tracking and follow up on the training activities that are uh, happening worldwide. So please do register your uh, training, specifically the training that happened in 2021, because we have very few entries for 2021, and we know there have been uh, uh, interesting initiatives in the field. Um, uh, you have the link uh, in the chat. Uh, it's, it really takes no time. I require some key basic information, and you can fill it in really like maximum 10 minutes. Uh, and uh, last but not least, uh, as I said, uh, please do visit our uh, web page. Uh, we're going to upload uh, the registration of the webinar as well as the uh, presentation from our panelists uh, in our web page. Uh, and you can access previous webinar as well as um, other presentation and resources that uh, uh, we had in the last uh, two years. Um, well, thank you very much. Thank you for joining. I hope it was interesting uh, and I hope to see you at the next um, CCM Tuesday, Tuesday webinar that is going to be on the 7th and is going to be uh, focused on the 16 days of activism and mainstreaming of GBV. Uh, and we will make sure that you will be kept posted on the next uh, CCM Tuesday webinars and the next initiative from the Global Cluster. So thank you very much once again, and I hope you're going to have a nice weekend evening, depending on the time zone you're joining from. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. Thank Thanks, you. Elena. Thank you. Thank bye. You. Thank you, Elena, Ingrid, and uh, Jennifer.